Hello, in this tutorial we're going to expand our game to actually handle the collisions between the missiles and the enemy ships. So we've got the missiles being fired and moving off to the right, and we have all of the enemies being randomly generated and moving to the left. What we need now to do is see if they overlap and if they collide. Now there are a lot of different ways of handling collision. We could do a per pixel collision detection and that would be the most accurate to see is any piece of that missile graphic hitting any piece of that enemy ship graphic. We're going to do something a little bit less optimal but a bit faster and that we're going to look at the rectangular region of the ship and the rectangular region of that missile and see if those rectangles overlap. Now in order to do that I need to iterate across all the missiles and all of the enemies so what we're going to be dealing with here is a two-dimensional loop and I want to create a new method that will actually process that. So inside of my handle missiles, I'm going to add a function call to a new function that we'll write called check for collisions. So I'm going to invoke a new function called check for collisions. And so let's write that now. It's a private static void check for collisions. And it takes no parameters in. But what we're going to do is iterate across all of the missiles and all of the enemies. So let's say for int m equals zero, we're going to start off at the beginning of our collection. And so long as m is less than the missiles count, I'm going to increment m each time. Okay, so this is a standard loop that we have. And we're going to start this counting variable m off at 0, and we're going to increment it every time through our loop. So we've got the m++ here, and we're going to keep looping so long as m is less than the count in the missiles collection. So we'll go from 0 to 9 in the case where we have 10 missiles in the collection. Now, in addition to iterating across all the missiles, I need to iterate across all the enemies. So I'm going to have another loop inside of this for loop. And I'm going to start this one using an E counter and set E equal to zero. And so long as E is less than or equal to the enemy's count, I'm going to keep doing the work and I'm going to increment E every time. So this is a for loop inside of a for loop. It's a two dimensional loop if you'd like. I'm going to iterate across all of the missiles and all of the enemies and do a pairwise comparison to see is there an overlap with each missile across each enemy. Now I could do three dimensional or four dimensional loops. I just need to put a new for loop inside of this. But for our purposes here, a two dimensional loop will suffice and we'll look at all the missiles and then for each of those missiles, we'll look across all of the enemies. What I'd like to do is see if the missile rectangular region of the missile overlaps the rectangular region of the enemy. And in order to do that, I need to be able to ask the missile and ask the enemy, what's the rectangular region that you occupy on the screen? So in order to pull that off, we're gonna to have to modify our enemy and our missile class. So let's do that now. Let's go into the enemy class, and I'd like to add a new property where I can ask it, what's the rectangular region that you make up? So this needs to be public so that we can ask it. And it's actually going to return a rectangle data structure to us. So this is a public rectangle, and I'm gonna call this extents. Now the extents property is going to allow me to, to say what rectangular region do you return. So I'm gonna return a new rectangle and the parameters that I'm going to give this rectangle are gonna be the X position and the Y position, which we get here, right? So the sprites position X and the sprites position Y is our X and Y. And then the third and fourth parameter of the rectangle constructor is the width, and that's simply the sprites width and the sprites height. Okay, so if you ask me what rectangular region on the screen does this enemy ship take up, it's going to be the XY of the sprite and then the width and the height of the sprite. And that's gonna give me this rectangular bounding region that the rectangle makes up for this enemy ship. And we need to do the same thing with the missile. So I'm just gonna take this code that we wrote and add it into the missile class right here. And now we have a extents property for the missile and an extents property for the enemy class. And so now we're at a position where we can actually make use of these and say, what are the rectangular regions that the missile and the enemy make up? And then we'll see if they overlap.
So let's create a new rectangle and I'll call this the missile extents and that's going to be equal to the missiles the mth missile in my collection, so missile sub m, and I'm going to ask it, what are your extents? I'm going to do the same thing here and create a rectangle for the enemy extents, and that's going to be equal to the eth entry in the enemy's collection, or enemies sub e, and I'm going to ask it, what is your extents? Now remember, the extents is this new property that we created here, and it's going to return to us this rectangular region, the x and the y and the width and the height for that enemy and that missile. So now I have two rectangles, missile extents and enemy extents, and I'd like to see if these two things overlap. So let's see, does the missile extents and the enemy extents overlap? So if they do, or if the overlaps on these two rectangles equals true, then what should I do? Well, I need to somehow remove the enemy and remove the missile. Now, you might think, oh, where did overlaps come from? We haven't written that yet, but this is the logic. We'd like to know, does the rectangular region of the missile overlap with the rectangular region of the enemy? And if that's true, then we're going to remove the missile, right? And remove the enemy, right? So let's actually define this overlaps function now. And there's a couple of different ways that we could test to see if two rectangles overlap, but we're going to create a new private static function. And this function is going to return to us a Boolean. Notice how we're using this overlaps function. We're going to pass it two rectangles, and it's going to give me a Boolean back, and that'll tell me, true or false, do these two rectangles overlap. So it's going to be a private function. It's still static because we're in our app main, which uh, is a static function there, and then it's returning to me a boolean. So the function is called overlaps, and it returns a boolean, which is a true-false value back. And the overlaps is going to take in a rectangle, we'll call that R1, and a second rectangle we'll call R2, and it's going to return true me, true or false. Now again, there's a couple of ways that I could test to see if two rectangles overlap, but the simplest logic is to say, let's look at the x of the first rectangle plus its width. And if the x position plus the width, that would give me the right-hand side. If the right-hand side of this first rectangle is less than the x position of the second rectangle, I know that these two rectangles can't overlap. What I'm saying here is, if the right-hand side of a rectangle the first rectangle is further to the left or less than the leftmost portion of the second rectangle, I know that these two rectangles can't overlap, so I'll return false here because I know that they don't overlap. Similarly, if the R1x is greater than R2x plus R2 width, then I know the R1x is the left-hand side of this, this uh, first rectangle, and R2x plus R2 width is the right-hand side of the second rectangle. I'm saying that this rectangle 1 has to be to the right of the rightmost position of the second rectangle. I know that I don't have an overlap, and I can return false as well. Okay, so in the x, what I've done with these two conditional expressions is said, I know in the first case, I know that the first rectangle is too far to the left to where they can't overlap. And in the second conditional expression, I'm saying that the, the rectangle one is too far to the right to where I know that they can't overlap. I can do the same thing in the y dimension. I can say, is the y component of the first rectangle plus its height is that less than R2y? In this case, I'm saying that the first rectangle must be above the second rectangle. And if that's the case, I know that they can't overlap. And then lastly, I can say, is the R1's y going to be greater than the R2's y plus R2's height? And if this is the case, if this is true, then I know that that first rectangle's y has to be greater than the bottom of the second rectangle, which means that the first rectangle is below that second rectangle, and I know that there can't be an overlap.
Now, if all four of these conditionals turn out to be false, meaning none of them were true, then I haven't left this function, I haven't returned a false value, and I know that there must be some overlap between these two rectangles. If the first rectangle wasn't to the left of the second rectangle, or the first rectangle wasn't to the right of the first rectangle, or the second rectangle, or if the first rectangle wasn't above the second rectangle, or the first rectangle wasn't below the second rectangle, I know that there has to be some intersection, and then this overlaps function should return true. Now with a function that's returning a value like this, it's returning a Boolean, all paths through the function have to return some value. Now, if, the, if any of these if conditional expressions evaluate to be true, then I'm gonna return that there is no overlap. But if I get all the way to the bottom of this function and I haven't left yet, then I know that there has to be an overlap. So my overlaps function is now complete and it'll tell me true or false whether these two rectangles overlap or not. Okay, so let's go back up here into our check for collisions, and I'm iterating across all of my missiles, and then within that I'm iterating across all of my enemies, and I determine the extents or the rectangular bounds of the missile and the enemy, and I test this overlaps function to say, if there is actually an overlap, then I need to remove these enemies. Now the problem with this is that I'm, I'm in a loop within a loop. And so if I try to remove an enemy or try to remove a missile, it's gonna get really messy really fast. Rather, what I'd like to do is just mark that the missile and the enemy are dead and that they should be removed later. So what I'm gonna do is add a new property to my enemy and missile class. I'm gonna call this, it's gonna be a public Boolean is alive. And the is alive variable is going to allow me to determine whether this enemy and this missile is alive. So certainly within our constructor, I'm gonna set is alive to be true because I just created this new enemy. And similar in the missile, I'm gonna create a public because I want to be able to access it. It needs to be public, not private. A Boolean is alive. And in the constructor for the missile, I'm going to set is alive to be true. By default, whenever I create a new missile, it should be alive. And now here in my, my main, I can mark the missile as not being alive, and I can mark the enemy as not being alive. So I could say missiles sub m dot is alive is equal to false, and say this missile should no longer be alive because it just collided with an enemy. And similarly, enemies sub e dot is alive should also be false. Meaning if these things overlapped, if they did collide, I wanna mark them as no longer alive and set the is alive variable to be false. And then after I've done these for loops, but before I'm, I'm gone and done with this check for collisions function, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna iterate across all of the enemies and all of the missiles and see if this thing is marked not alive, then I wanna remove it from the collection. So you notice that this, this two dimensional for loop is checking for collision, but it's not removing anything from the collisions. Sorry, it's not removing anything from the collections. So the missiles and the enemies collections will be the same after the for loops are run. The only thing might be changed is that some of the missiles and some of the enemies might be marked as no longer alive. And what I'd like to do is now iterate across all the missiles and all the enemies and say, if any of these things are marked not alive, I need to remove them from the collection. So let's do another for loop here. And we'll iterate across all of the enemies. And we'll start at the end. Remember, because we're changing the data structure, we need to make sure that we start at the end and move to the beginning. Because I'm modifying this, I can't use a for each loop. So let's do the for loop starting with E at the end. And we'll make sure that E is at least zero because we don't wanna go negative in this. And we'll just subtract every time through. So if the enemies at position E is alive is equal to false, meaning you've marked this thing that it should be removed, I'm gonna say enemies.remove at E. So what we're gonna do is start at the end of the enemies collection and go all the way to the beginning, and if I see one that's marked as it should no longer be alive, I'm gonna remove it from the collection. I'll do the same thing for my missiles. And starting at the end, count minus one, I'm gonna keep going so long as M is at least zero, and I'm going to subtract one from M each time. And if the missiles at position M is alive is equal to false, that means I've marked it that it should be removed. I'm going to remove at position M. So now what we'll do is we'll iterate across all of the missiles, 
and see if any of them have been marked for removal and then we'll remove them from the collection if that is the case. So let's review what we've done here. Inside of the handle missiles, we're going to update each missile and we're going to check to see if it's moved off of the end of the screen, but we're also going to check for collisions. So the check for collisions is a new function that we wrote that iterates across all the missiles. And then inside of that for loop, we're going to iterate across all of the enemies. So we've got a two dimensional grid, each missile, each enemy. We're going to ask what are the extents of the missile and the enemy here and see if they overlap. And if they do, we're going to mark them as no longer alive. After I've gone through all of the missiles and all of the enemies and done a pairwise comparison between them, I'm going to iterate across all of the enemies and see if any of these have been marked for removal, and then I'm going to remove it from the collection if it's no longer alive. And I'll do the same thing for the missiles. I'll iterate across all of the missiles in the collection and see if any of them have been marked for removal, and if so, I'll remove them from the collection. So now we're finally at a point where we can actually run this. So let's hit F5, and we'll run this. And we'll shoot, and you'll see that now when our missiles collide with an enemy, right, the, both the missile and the enemy are removed. And you'll notice that we can do some near misses, and so that'll show that the rectangular region is working, right, and that we can also make the collision. The missile looks like it hits just right before the, the enemy, but that's correct because we have this rectangular bounding region that goes... Um, around the missile and around the enemy, right? So you'll see that one, it looks like it, it uh, was removed slightly before the actual collision occurred, and that's because we're using this approximation, this kind of gross rectangular view around that enemy ship and around that rectangle. We could do a little bit more work in the overlaps function if we wanted to get more precise with our collision we could improve the logic here, but for now this this will suffice and it allows us to see do the rectangular regions around the missile and around that, that enemy ship collide. Okay, as a review, remember in the missiles class and the enemy class, we had to add this public rectangle is extents that tells us the rectangular region that bounds and goes around the, the sprite for the missile and the sprite for the enemy. And we also added this public is alive function excuse me, this public is alive boolean variable that tells us true or false is the enemy and is the missile alive. And we made use of that here when we marked them as being dead if there was a collision and then we went and cleaned them out of those data structures, those lists, when we needed to remove them. Now there's one slight improvement that we could make in this in that if I have determined that there was a collision and I removed the missile and I removed the enemy, it doesn't make sense to continue to check that same missile and uh, against more enemies. So we've got a command called break that'll actually say stop looping. Okay, in this case, this break command is going to tell me to stop looking to see if this missile collides with any other enemies. It's going to say stop, stop uh, iterating across more enemies here. It's going to immediately leave this for loop and it's going to look to the next missile. And the reason that this is a small improvement is, for example, if a missile collides with the first enemy out of a thousand enemies, and the missile is now marked as exploded, and it, the, the enemy that it collided with is now marked as exploded, I don't need to check that same missile against the other 999 miss, uh, enemies that are, that are out there in this collection. I can simply say, look, I know that the missile hit this first enemy. Don't look at any other enemies in the collection. Let's just move on to the next missile and see if it hit anything. So by adding this break statement here, it's going to prevent us from continuing to look at any enemies beyond that one in which the collision occurred. Now in this case, we don't have a tremendous number of enemies on the screen and a tremendous number of missiles on the screen, but if you were dealing with a very, very large collection and you found that, in fact, you had a collision or you, you know, some condition was true where we don't need to look any further in the data structure, this break command is a very useful way of leaving a loop, like a for loop, and to stop looking at anything else in that collection. So from an optimization perspective, it might not necessarily be needed here. It's only a very, very small improvement with respect to time and the computation cost, but realize the break statement can be useful in larger data structures. And that'll do it for this tutorial on handling the collision between the missiles and the enemy ships. What we'll do next is actually create sound and animation when the uh, explosion occurs. We'll see a nice plume of fire go out and we'll play an explosion sound in future tutorials.